Hi, in this video tutorial I'd like to talk a little bit about the musculoskeletal system and give a general overview for 7th grade life science. The first part of the musculoskeletal system that most people are familiar with are bones or the skeleton. And the skeleton does several things. It provides shape and support for your body. It provides a way that your body can move. Muscles pull on bones and therefore create the rigid structures that move. It provides protection. Your skull protects your brain and your rib cage it protects your lungs and heart. It also is where blood cells are produced and it provides a place to store minerals such as calcium. Let's talk about bones first. So as far as bones go, uh, from the outside they look somewhat solid but they're really not. This outside uh, part of the bone is called compact bone and it's very dense and you can see that compact bone right over here. This is the head of a femur from uh, that's someone's thigh bone. And you can see the compact bone, it's very thick. In here is spongy bone, and spongy bone has a lot of spaces in it, and that helps it be strong yet lightweight. And you can see the spongy bone right over here. And then in the very middle is bone marrow. You can't quite see the bone marrow over here, and that's where blood cells are produced. And those are the, the overall the main three parts of bone. That allows bone to be very strong, yet at the same time, very lightweight. As far as muscles go, there are three types of muscles. There's skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Skeletal muscle is the kind of muscle that is attached to your skeleton. It's voluntary, so you can control it, and it pulls on bones and helps you move. Smooth muscle is found in your internal organs, mostly in your digestive system, your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and it's also in the lining of arteries. And it can contract or relax involuntary, and then cardiac muscle is found in your heart, and it's involuntary as well, so you can't control it. You can see a whole bunch of skeletal muscles right over here on this diagram of an arm. Here's a skeletal muscle right there, and that muscle would then be attached to a tendon that's then attached to the bone and it can pull or contract and then move the person's arm. Tendon's main job is to connect muscle to bone. Here on a leg you can see someone's Achilles tendon and the Achilles tendon is connected to muscles on the back of the leg so that when that muscle contracts it then pulls on the tendon and the tendon is connected to the heel bone and it then moves the leg and the foot. In someone's arm, you can see all these muscles through the arm, and as they contract, they then pull on the tendons that extend up through the hand, and they will pull on the fingers and cause the arm to move. So tendons' job is to connect muscle to bone. Ligaments look very much like tendons, but their job is to connect bone to bone. So here we have a knee, and right up here you can see the femur, and down here is the tibia, and inside it you have some ligaments. There's one and there's one. This one right here is the ACL or anterior cruciate ligament and then in the back there is the PCL or posterior cruciate ligament. And the jobs of these ligaments is to connect this bone, the tibia, to this bone, the femur. There's also ligaments on the side. There's the medial collateral ligament uh, and they help hold this joint together. If someone ever tears a ligament, that injury is called a sprain and a partial tear, if this was partially torn, that would slowly heal on its own. And I say slowly because ligaments don't get a lot of blood, therefore they don't get a lot of sugar and glucose, and they take a long time to heal. If this was to fully tear, it would not heal on its own, and that joint would be unstable, and really the only option to gain that stability back would be to go through surgery where that ligament would be sewn back together or reattached if it had torn off at its attachment point. Cartilage is the last thing I'd like to talk about briefly and cartilage can be found on the ends of bones. So here's the femur and there's a layer of cartilage on the end of the femur and then there's also some cartilage in between the femur and the tibia. And the job of this cartilage is to pad one bone from the other because there's a lot of force. This bone pushing down on this bone when you step, this bone pushes up, and these bones are constantly putting force on each other, and cartilage helps pad and cushion that joint so that the bones don't wear down on each other. It creates a smooth surface. The most 
probably one of the most common injuries to cartilage, is that it can be torn, and if there's a little tear in it, that can create inflammation and pain and discomfort in the joint. That can be operated on, and that involves going into the joint and trimming off the torn piece of cartilage. All right, just an overview here. We talked about the main parts of the musculoskeletal system. Bones, which really create the rigid framework that everything else uh, uses. Muscles pull on bones, allowing us to move. Tendons connect muscles to bones so that when the muscle contracts, it pulls on the tendon, the tendon pulls on the bone, and you move. Ligaments connect bones to bones by holding joints together. And cartilage can be found inside the joint, so it pads the ends of bones and cushions them. Uh, hope this was helpful, and if you'd like more in-depth information on the musculoskeletal system, please take a look at one of my other video tutorials, or take a look across the internet. There's a wide variety of information.